Mr. Lasanto. Okay, please. thank you very much. So the topic is, as you know, the essence of resilient leadership. And uh, it's a broad topic, as you all know. So it is not easy to uh, describe the leadership because there are, there, are, there are many patterns, there are many uh, categories of leadership and you might have heard of those things. And I think leadership is not something that is possible to taught. Uh, it's not possible to taught, but I'm 100% sure it can be learned. So though it can, can't be taught, it can be learned. So what I can do is, I'll share some of my experience with my thoughts on it so that uh, you can grab uh, some of the points of my experiences. To start with, uh, I can remember when I was uh, participating my master's in manufacturing management from the University of Colombo. So uh, I have to undergo a course called uh, leadership and organizational behavior. Uh, during the session, our lecturer uh, told us uh, that one of the key things about leaders, the leaders don't accept the status quo. Status quo is the current situation. Uh, he or she always thinks that the situation is not the best and we can go for a much better situation. We can uplift our organization or the institute to another sit status. That's how he or she looks at the organization. He doesn't accept the status quo. He wants to change it. Then he went on to say, that's something actually I learned uh, during my master's and something that stick in my mind. So leaders doesn't agree with the status quo. So that's where the leadership begins because you want to change the organization to the next level. So that's an important quote, I think that uh, people who wants to play a leadership role should keep in mind. We cannot agree with the status quo. And then, then interestingly, the lecturer went on to say that most religions teach us to be satisfied with what we have, to be complacent about what we have. But on the other hand, the leaders does not agree with what we have and the other status quo. So that's something really confused me. When I was going back from the lecturing to home, I was thinking, is that really so? And also I was thinking about a bit. So being a Buddhist, uh, then I was thinking about this uh, Jataka Kata. So in those uh, stories, the Bodhisattva has been playing a playing the role of the leader in most of the stories as you heard. So then what does this say? So does, don't religions uh, encourage people to change the status quo? So I thought otherwise than our lecture. So during the exam, we were given a question to write about the leadership and their qualities and especially with reference to the doesn't agreeing with status quo. So then I start writing about Prince Siddharth. So I wrote, uh, he had three palaces and he had good education. His father was a king and he had a nice, beautiful wife and you name it, he had it. But was he complacent? And you all know now. He wanted to challenge the status quo. So what are the things he didn't agree? He was not agree with being ill, getting old and dying. So we would see these things as very much pretty ordinary thing, things, but Prince Siddhartha didn't accept it. He was not complacent or he didn't think it is okay to die. He didn't think it is okay to getting old. He, he didn't think that it is okay to uh, being ill sometime. So he challenged that. He wanted to change that status. That's how the leadership begins. So I answered that way in the, in the exam paper. So I, was, I got uh, good marks because I could change 
uh, our lecturer's mind on that perspective. So what I want to say is the leadership always begins if you really need to change the status quo. And in religions, maybe you you are talking about kind of a paradigm shift or to an, in a different level of changing the status quo, but it is always about changing the status quo to the betterment of the society for the next level. That's where the leadership begins. So I would tell you another story. Uh, I was uh, playing cricket from my childhood for my school and then for the uh, University of Colombo. And I was privileged to play, play with the great cricketer Kumar Sangakkara uh, for our university team. Actually at that time he was already represented the, representing the Sri Lankan team in his uh, early of his career. Uh, so we were playing together for the university team in the for the inter-university games. So after one game, Kumar Sangakkara said the nowadays uh, it's not enough to score a hundred in an innings we should try to get double hundreds so we were looking at each other's face what about this guy is talking about it's not enough to get in getting hundreds because you know that the hundred getting hundred is even difficult and he was in early of his career and he's talking about getting double hundreds so we thought so he has to first score few 50s and a few hundred first then only he has to think about that's how how generally we used to thought but how did kumar sangha car ended up he scored 11 double hundred and he has scored the uh, second highest number of double hundreds and he's he's only second to uh, sir donald bradman who has scored 12 double hundred and also in in one inning um, kumar sangakkara scored 199 and got out actually if he scored another single run in that game he would have matched the highest uh, number of double hundred scored by don bradman so but what i want to say is so he he, he started thinking about double hundred when he doesn't get any before he scored any double hundred. So in cricket, you know, it's very unpredictable because it is only a single ball need to take you out. Then you have to walk to the pavilion. So it's, it's very uncertain. But even in that conditions, the, your mindset works. So he ended up with 11 double hundred hundreds so that's something we need to actually when i was watching him every time he scored double hundred it reminds me what this guy was saying in the uh, ground of university of colombo that's something really remarkable so how you think make who you are and also when i was playing with him what i noticed his uh, short playing or his uh, cricketing strokes is not exceptional compared to the other players. They are good, of course, better than others, but not exceptional. It, it, it's just better than others. And there were some shots then uh, he's, he was not playing than some other players at that time. But the way he thinks is absolutely different. It is remarkably different. The attitude is a different between the ordinary university cricket player and the great Kumar Sangakkar. And that is where, that is why he ended up in where he ended up. So, so everything starts in the mind. So if you want to lead, first be the leader of yourself. That is exactly what Kumar Sangakkar did. He was leading himself. He started the leading himself. Because uh, before you lead others, you have to make sure you can lead you. Then the society will embrace you as a leader. 
because you are taking you to a you to the next level like kumar sangakkara did so ultimately he became the captain of the sri lankan team and the difference between us and him was the way of thinking so that is very very important and once you become the leader of a team you need to you have to work with the team so in for that you need to have certain qualities pretty simple things you have to basically respect others and you have to uh be empathized and also you need to recognize if something somebody does something good i i will uh, tell you another story so this is again a example from the cricket field so i was captaining the university of colombo cricket team and we were playing a game with uh, kalutara town club ktc uh, it's a division 2 game two day game and we had a fast bowler his name is shamira left arm fast bowler he he, he was bowling really well he was continue continuously re, repeating uh, defeating the batsmen outside edge uh, pitched on mid lane off and move away from those stumps to towards like an out singer and but he didn't uh, able to find the edge so three sips were sips and gali were waiting for a catch from the edge of the bat but it didn't happen but he repeatedly defeated the batsman the batsman was really pressurized then um, we did a bowling change in the other end the new bowler took the wicket after a couple of uh, wickets couple of balls because the batsman was pressurized and he was he wanted to uh, get rid of the get rid of the pressure he he got he went for a wrong shot and he paved with his wicket but not to the shamir to the other bowler then as you know when the team gathered after the wicket was fallen i told uh, shamir this wicket really belongs to you you are the one who pressurized the man and make this man to play that wrong shot uh, then after 10 years i met him during a wedding and he used to remember that what i said actually i have forgotten by that time uh, what i said to him but he he could remember that i said him that we get belongs to him so that is the respect that should be given to the uh, you to your colleagues so when you are in a team so that is very important that that will that will encourage them to do better and if you have people around you and if they are so capable so the leader doesn't want to be that worried so one good example is before i take the chairmanship of milko i i i had no idea about uh, dairy industry i didn't know much about even cows uh so some of my friends genuinely asked me well, can you take this responsibility knowing nothing about cows so but i answered i don't have to work with cows or dairy so all i have to do is i have to work with people so which i think i can i have done well so the leader doesn't have to be the smartest guy in the organization leader should not be the cleverest person so the leader has to make sure the people are empowered and they are given the correct environment to come up with different different tactics different ideas uh, and they are motivated uh, they are innovative those things has to be made sure so if you get the things right being the leader is the easiest thing because you don't have to do anything yourself you have to make sure others are doing the things right in an efficient and effective manner so if you can make that environment that's what should happen and when something is done when something is achieved if the team said if the team members said the leader did it leader did that 
then you have to really worry about your leadership. That should not what the team feel. The team should feel we did it. Even if they say the leader did not do anything, he was just watching, that doesn't matter. But if they say the leader did that, there is an issue. So you have to worry in that case. So the team should feel we did it. So leadership is not doing things by yourself. So it is just about making the environment and make sure the interactions among people are taking place in the right manner. So otherwise, it will be a headache for you if you try to uh, do everything yourself. Because what I, uh, I forgot to mention another part of my answer to my friends who ask, uh, aren't you afraid to take the Milko without knowing anything about the dairy industry? I said, there must be expert in the organization. So there must be clever people. So I don't have to uh, learn everything. So I just have to work with those clever people. So one of the main challenge of the leaders today is to learn the art of working with people who are clever than you, who has more knowledge than you. It is not necessary for you to grab the, all the knowledge. What the leader should have is the awareness. Leader should have the awareness. It's, as I said, as the leadership begins with self-leadership, awareness also should begin with self-awareness. You have to have an awareness about yourself first. And what is your purpose? And what are you going to do and how you are going to do and how is your mindset? Because what, even though the leader does not need to know everything and do everything himself, what leader does and what leaders say affects a lot. Therefore, you need to make sure that you, you do the right thing and you, do, you say the right thing. So therefore, it is very important to have the self-awareness. Then you need to be aware of the, the status of the organization. Because what you are going to do as a leader is to change the status quo. That is the prevailing status. If you need to uplift the prevailing, prevailing status, you need to have a good awareness of the present situation. And as a leader, I would recommend you to not to expect the respect from others. Instead, you have to respect others. So always think about your team. Always make sure they are given the right tool, the right facilities, and uh, you have to make sure that you have the right mindset to be emphasized, uh, empathize with them because sometimes you might be pressurized with a lot of things. Then if in such a situation, some of the qualities that you have had may be shaken. So therefore you have to always make sure that the qualities the respecting others, the patience, patience, and the empathizing with, with others, honesty, and those things has to be preserved as most valuable things. And when you when you have sharpened your skills, the pretty ordinary things become your strengths. I'll I'll take another example from cricket. So let's say we have a fast bowler who can bowl very fast. So then what he does usually, he start practicing to bowl a slow ball. Slow ball is something he bowl in a slower speed than his usual faster ball. And that slower ball become very special, right? But bowling in that speed is pretty ordinary and many people can do, but because he can bowl faster than others, his ordinary ball becomes very special. So that's the advantage of getting many skills as a leader. So if you are a leader, so pretty small things that you had 
from your childhood. Maybe your qualities becomes your strength. For example, genuineness. Maybe you had your genuineness from your childhood. Maybe you are not lying. You are always talking the truth. You are honest and you are genuine. So those things becomes your strengths, the major strengths, because people start trusting you. People start loving you. So it is very important that you preserve those things that you have you, you have taken from your childhood because what you learn from childhood is the most important thing are the most important things no matter how big you are now so most important things are taught in your childhood so don't forget that always stick to those basics don't shaken from those basics because eventually those have become very special as I said taking the example of that slow bowl of the fast bowl if you can't bowl that fast your slow bowl is not special it's it's then pretty ordinary the batsman may score runs if you bowl every ball with that that speed but if you can bowl fast what happens is your slow ball becomes very special and it becomes your strength as well. So likewise, the small things that you preserve from your childhood becomes your strength. And when you need to change the status quo of an organization, it is very important that you need to speak with your team members. In that speech, you have to make sure that they understand the why factor. So often people may make mistake only saying or stopping after telling what, what should be done. But uh, to make people be more encouraged, more motivated, more innovative, you need to tell them why that should be done. And also you need to make sure that they understood what we are doing this then they they making that project their own project they are into that project with all of their heart so that is very important when you are doing communication you need to make sure the people understood why this is to be done and what is to be done so actually you can delegate them to decide what should be done but you just have to have a discussion why we should do something so uh, communication in that aspect becomes very important and i want to reiterate that being a leader is not the most difficult thing so if you if you if you enjoy what you are doing that's one of the easiest thing so you have to take it easy but you have to be responsible only if you are responsible you get the freedom because you need to understand this freedom and responsibility is not two different things the same thing if somebody is responsible we would like to give the freedom to him right so you are give, getting the response freedom only if you are responsible otherwise people will try to control you so in if you are a leader in the organization you should give the responsibility to people and that means you are giving the freedom to them you should not control to them and also you you can enjoy the freedom there by giving freedom to others because they are now responsible you don't have to do each and everything so only thing you have you have to make sure that awareness is there so you need to know what is happening in the organization the status quo and how the status is changing now that you have to make sure that awareness is there so i would like to name two essence of resilience leadership that is the people factor and the awareness so leadership begins with yourself you need to lead yourself like what the Kumar Sangakkara's example explained. 
and you need to make sure people people are motivated encouraged focused and they are they are for a common goal so for that you need to explain and you have to make sure they know why they are doing doing this why we are doing this and you have to make sure as a leader the awareness is their self awareness and the organization awareness awareness of the people and those things and also if you have sharpened your skill don't forget about the small skills small things the pretty ordinary things like your values values and qualities which will become your major strengths like slower bowler a faster bowler so those are the things that i need to basically share with you and if you have any question and i would like to i'm happy to answer Hello, sir. I am Vidya Sagar. Yes, Vidya Shankar. Vidya yes, Sagar. Yes, sir. I am also a huge fan of Sangha Kara. Yeah. And um, that I heard from the leadership about him. That's very really awesome. And uh, uh, can you please uh, share with your experience about the leadership programs with us? Any other thing? Un unforgettable experience. Uh, can you repeat? Can you repeat? Uh, can can you share with us the unforgettable memories about the leadership programs? Leadership. Yes. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, leadership program. So uh, there is nothing called leadership program. So one would ask whether. the leaders are born i would say uh, not leaders are not born for example if you consider mahatma gandhi and gandhi was a very shy guy he was dare to speak uh, in public but you know how he ended up so sometimes situations and scenarios build leaders like in political environment uh, and also i would like to mention one thing so one thing you will really need to look at is your egoism so i would like to take one example let's think about a discussion table within your organization uh, just uh, consider about two guys one guy who may be speaking unnecessarily uh, maybe you know, he's telling uh, things not relevant to the topic so the reason is he he needs to be a little bit he would like to be noticeable for other to others and there might be another guy he is not uh speaking he's just listening and he's there to uh put his ideas to the table and if you look at these two guys they are they are having very different behaviors but i think the core is same that is egoism i think it's obvious with the with the guy who wants to be noticeable he he has egoism i think that's quite clear for you and with the guy who's not speaking who's there to share his idea why i am saying he is also suffering from egoism he's there to speak because he thinks what the others will think about me so if i say something wrong will others laugh at me so will others think i am an idiot so those kind of mindset refrain him from speaking even though maybe he has the best idea during the discussion table he may be they are to speak because of those kind of feelings that feelings are there because of the feeling of i me that is egoism so if you don't have egoism if you forget about you during the discussion what would happen then you then you put your entire focus to the discussion then you are in that situation so then you forget about you then you 
speak only when required and you set important things as you feel so which will help for very healthy dialogue so the egoism has to be reduced if you want to be a leader because egoism kills you and there might be some uh, leaders with huge uh, egoism like hitler but you know what has happened to the world with those leaders with egoism so if you want to be a leader you have to reduce your egoism so and like i said if you want to speak out even that egoism hinders so therefore uh, checking yourself being the leader to yourself is what the leaders should concentrate on first and that doesn't mean you you don't have to uh, look at the financial accounts and the status so it's also important but uh, the main thing is you have to look after yourself you have to be the leader of yours if you can't lead you it's very difficult to lead others so you have to make sure you lead you 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 need to make sure you are learning you are motivated you are you are taking you to the next status if you if you don't want to take you to the next status how can you take the organization to the next status maybe that you are not good enough for the next status and another thing that i want to emphasize when the organization is in trouble sometimes what to be done and making the common goal can be easier for example let's say we all fell into a uh, deep uh, or, or well then the the entire team might have one goal that is to getting out of the well uh, but still there might be some people that who are saying that no we can't go out of the well we have to stay here that is that is the reality of things like that but but it is Uh, easy for someone to show now we have uh, somehow failed into this well now we have to get out of the well so then you can motivate people to think about how to get up get out from the well uh, strategies tactics and discussions those are emerging once you set the common goal to get out of the well so now let's say with a brilliant team work the entire team get out of the Well, right now you are on the ground so i think that is when the leader face the major challenge because when you are in the well it is easy for you to show the other team members the goal the goal is quite obvious and it is easy to set that is to get out of the well but once you get out of the well you are in the ground so now which direction we should go should we make a house here should we travel together to somewhere and can you get everybody to to travel in the same path that's where the challenge begins and when you are in a real trouble it's it's kind of easy to set the common goal but once you get up of kind of a trouble when you are in a normal situation it's hard if you look at sri lankan history you can understand that when we are invaded we are much strong so we know the challenge we have we are able to face the challenge but once there is no particular obvious challenge what to do and how to get the entire team towards one goal is the most difficult thing for the for a leader because in that case you need to have a lot of discussions you need to engage all of them in the discussion you have to listen a lot what others say and after listening to all you 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 should check whether everybody can be taken into one goal so so and even as a country throughout the history we have experienced that not only the con- the country the entire world has experienced this if you take what you call the developed countries today they have the challenge of with the climate so they have to they have to face huge challenge with their weather actually so the countries who was who were, who are not challenged by the weather 
are now little behind than the countries who were challenged hugely by the weather. So therefore, I think you have to set challenges yourself. If you don't have a challenge, what the leader should do, the leaders leaders should be able to set a challenge for your team. If there is no challenge, there is no progress. To have progress, you need to have a challenge. So it is easier to be in the well. If you are the leader, the easiest situation is be in the well because you can get the entire team towards the obvious goal. Once you achieve that goal, when the challenge is not obvious, then you have to, sometimes that may, that might make some bad effects as well because you can take the unity of the team to get out of the well. So, because everybody is there for a one goal. Once you get out of the well, so people start thinking different things, right? So, in that case, your integrity, uh, your honestness, your sympathy, and your skills, and those things matters because people you need to be able to win the trust of others. For that, you have to have qualities. And also you need to learn to respect others and listen to others, especially when there is no obvious challenge to be seen. So people might think the leadership is more difficult when the organization or the entire team is in a trouble. No, it's not. It's, it's easy because you can show the goal easily. So what is more difficult is when there is no clear challenge. So that is much difficult. Do you have any other questions? I think uh, due to time constraints, uh, yeah. we have to mourn. Uh, thank you for such mm -hmm. a wonderful and insightful discussion because you brought upon so many things about the importance of leadership and how we should think and how anyone can be a leader and you even gave how we should think how we should think like leaders and so many good examples and i'm i really hope and i know that everyone here got huge amount of value so thank you very much mr lasanta please accept our token of appreciation for delivering us this wonderful speech sorry yeah thank you very much